Okay, the state of our wing. As Colonel Lee mentioned, yeah, we're, we're coming up, folks. But I'm going to give you some numbers, things like that, to prove it. The one on the left, that one is last year at this time. And you can see it wasn't great, wasn't great. But COVID hit us like everybody else. This one is 90 days ago. Red is bad, green is good, yellow is okay, blue is, is really good. So you can see we're coming up. Overall, we're up about two and a half percent in the wing as far as numbers. Seniors, we dropped a little bit compared to a year ago, but that's okay. We went up by almost 10% in cadets. So we're coming up little by little. Our cadet programs are rocking. 63.64% of cadets get their row rides within 180 days. Considering that we were down as far as giving row rides for quite a while because of that evil COVID, we're getting back up there. TLC, over 80% of our wing has completed the TLC course. Our cadets, we gained six from this time last year. These are or compared to last year's stats, by the way. When I say plus two, minus two, whatever, that's compared to last year at this time. We gained two acres, four air hearts, lost to Mitchell, but I expect uh, he graduated and went to school. Lost two Wright brothers, but we're fixing that. There's been some uh, new Wright brothers just in the last few days. So we've gained six cadets overall. We have 225 cadets in our wing right now, which compared to where we were and considering how things have gone since COVID, I'm okay with this because we're starting to come back up as Colonel Lee pointed out. Cadet Advisory Council, Cadet Captain Lou Sandoval. She also soloed as a pilot. She has her pilot's license. She soloed on her 16th birthday. So that is the chair of our Cadet Advisory Council. Great new logo, it's right there. Those of you who in Nevada Wing have probably already seen it. It's on emails and everything else all over the place. That was designed by Cadet Second Lieutenant Cameron Hranick. And I think it looks great. Billy Edwards Flight Scholarship. Yes, it is active, it is alive. Our first two award winners for that were Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Dana Sirwill out of Henderson Composite and Cadet Captain Lou Sandoval out of Carson City Composite. So both ends of the state were represented. That's kind of cool too. Let's go to aerospace education real quick. Over 62% of our wing has their Jaegers. That's 0.19% higher than this time last year. So even though COVID's been working on us and taking its toll and everything else, we're, folks are still doing their, their studies and, and working to progress themselves. We gained one master aerospace ed officer. We still at nine seniors, we lost two technicians, but one of those went all the way to here and the other one transferred to another wing. So I know what happened to them. We have a new SUAS program officer, Captain uh, Rob Sirwill, because Captain uh, Blunt moved to Florida, but Rob Sirwill stepped right into the shoes. He's experienced with uh, drones, SUAS and all that. And he is uh, very excited about taking this program over. We got the two Scotty 2 Pro kits being sent for that program. And our new, relatively new, Aerospace Education Officer, Captain Whitcomb. He's working on a drone introduction program to help seniors and cadets kind of get used to what, that, what that's about. In fact, he has some, uh, we got some four for the conference here that he's gonna be showing off and demonstrating and everything in the, AC, in the AE portion. So he's working on making people kind of excited about SUASs, ES. Emergency services. Instructor pilots, and I love this part, we have gained. We, our goal is a minimum of one instructor pilot per aircraft. We're up uh, 0.23. We now have one, a little over, I know it's, how do you have a little over one, one pilot, right? It's just numbers. It's just math. We have met that goal. We've exceeded it. We're 1.31 instructor pilots per aircraft, and I'm really happy about that. Check pilots, we've gained there too. Again, we're at 0.23 higher than we were this time last year. 
Our goal was minimum of one per aircraft and we're at 1.15. And I would just point out to you folks that in Pacific region, we are the only wing that has exceeded 90% of its goals in both the 70-5 and the mission pilot check, uh, check rides. So we're the bomb. We are the bomb. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'll talk more about those specific individuals in a little bit. There's a team of Stan Eval pilots in this wing that is just amazing. And I'll get to them in a little bit here. VFR pilots, we're not quite there yet, but we've improved. We want five per aircraft and we uh, are at 4.46. So we're getting there, we're getting there. And it's a gain of uh, 1.13 per aircraft from this time last year. Mission pilots, again, we're not quite where we want to be yet. We want to be at five per aircraft. We have 12 aircraft, by the way. Five per aircraft, we're at 2.54. So we got a ways to go, but we have gained. We're making progress. And especially in these times of COVID and everything else, progress is a good thing, folks. Now, this next category, we've lost some folks. We're down 47 mission observers. I know that's hard to believe. And I went back and checked three times because I'm like, Can this re is this real? That's what it says. Now we've gained some scanners. We've gained 23 scanners, but we lost 47 observers. It's just a difference in, in training. You're still sitting in the, in the aircraft, just a matter of training levels. But we'll get to that again in a little bit here. Some more operations. Ground team leaders, we've lost a few. We're down five from where we were last year. We're at seven and we've lost people due to transfers. We've lost people, unfortunately, due to their passing and other reasons. Incident commanders, another smiley face for you. We stayed at 12 IC3s, gained two IC2s and gained two IC1s. That's pretty good from this time last year, especially as I said, COVID has been evil, pure evil, but we've still gained incident commanders, which is a way, tough ways to go. I'd like to see a little improvement here, but again, we didn't fly as much last year, 2021. That's where we are right now. We're 38th. This time last year, we were 33rd. So we've lost a little ground, but we're starting to fly again. We've got flight hours, and uh, I know Colonel Lynn would, would agree with me on that. We've got some flight hours and we're starting to fly especially down south as the winter comes in up north, I'm going to want you guys down south to fly the wings off your aircraft. This is a cool thing right here, and this just happened. I just got the, the word from uh, Lieutenant Colonel Gertzen down at Henderson Composite. He has worked with a team of folks to reestablish our glider program in the south. Finally, I mean, for a, quite a few years now we've had gliders up here in the north at uh, Douglas County Composite Minden but we've had trouble getting our gliders going down south at the Gene Airport well it's got done we took some cadets up uh, what last week two weeks ago something like that last week I think but the point is is we now have a glider at Gene and it's flying so we have a couple tow pilots down there now we've got an uh, operating glider and cadets are starting to fly in the gliders in the south, which is awesome. Speaking of gliders, this hasn't come to fruition quite yet. We're in the process of talking about this, but I want to give you guys a heads up that we are talking with the uh, folks at region, Colonel Ishikata and the folks in Rocky Mountain region and the folks in these other wings, Utah and Idaho, with the possibility of maybe being able to can do a tri-wing glider academy in Wendover. Now, for those of you who went to encampment, that's Wendover. But because of its, its location proximate to Idaho, Utah, of course us, we are working with them to try and see if we can do that. We're in the planning process. It's not a done deal yet, but they're working on it. And I know they're working on it because I got an email about it just this morning from Colonel Ishikata that I have to dig into a little bit, but this is in discussion. So this might happen. In other words, we are really jump-starting and moving on, on our glider program here in Nevada, which is great. Okay, but not everything is peaches and cream. There's some things we have to work on. And I mentioned a couple of them already. 
the mission check pilots. We need to basically double that. We need some mission check pilots. We are working on it. We've gotten check rides for mission pilots, as I mentioned a little bit ago. We are working on it. We, are, we need mission pilots. We need four. We've got two, basically two and a half. So we need to work on that too, but we are. The Stanley Val team is working really hard with trying to get this up. And it is up. It's just not where we want to be yet. We want to see more cadets involved in ES. Mission radio operators, ground teams. You saw we're short of ground team leaders. That's where some of you folks who do ground teams could step up, increase your training, become ground team leaders, and bring the cadets up into ground, uh, ground team. And we want to keep the cadets flying. The flight programs we have, the Billy Edwards Scholarship, as I mentioned, the glider stuff that we just got started down south, all those are good things. And, uh, but we want to keep our cadets flying. Those observers that I mentioned a moment ago, we had that big drop. I'd like to see some of those new scanners. We gained a ton of scanners and lost a ton of observers. Let's get some of those scanners trained up to be observers. And we can address that, that question. We have one mission chaplain, you folks, one in the whole wing. We need to recruit some chaplains. Just in general, we have four or five chaplains in the whole wing. So we need to recruit some chaplains in general, and especially mission chaplains. Those guys are invaluable at a complex mission base. More senior involvement in cadet programs. So many times you go to a squadron meeting and the cadets will meet over here, the seniors will meet over here, and you know, near, near the two combined. I'd like to see more interaction as a whole squadron, seniors and cadets, rather than two pieces of a squadron. We want to continue to support the Cadet Advisory Council. Captain Sandoval is uh, our, the new advisory chair, and she's very excited and very motivated to get the cadets rolling. So let's help them out. Keep that, uh, keep that dialogue going, keep talking to them. Communicate, squadron commanders. If you have stuff that you would like to see happening with the cadets, let them know. They would be able to dialogue between the different squadrons and maybe put something together, but let them know. Legislative squadron. It exists, sort of, but I'm in, in discussions with our uh, government advisory officer, um, Colonel Spires, to try to recruit some of the state legislators. If you don't know, some of the folks that we have in our congressional delegation here in Nevada are CAP members. In fact, uh, four out of six. That's not bad. That would be Congressman Namade, Congresswoman Titus, Senator Rosen, and Congresswoman Lee has expressed an interest and requested an application. Senator Cortez Masto and uh, Congress Congressman Horsford are the only two thus far in our congressional delegation at the federal level who aren't involved or at least very interested in Civil Air Patrol as far as becoming members. But we're working on them. Communication. We are a really geographically challenged state. Everybody in here who knows anything about Nevada knows this. It's 300 miles between, 400 miles actually, between Reno and Wendover, 300 miles between Reno and Elko, 500, 425 miles between Reno and Las Vegas, and there's nothing in between. People ask me, oh, how come we don't do a conference in, you know, in Tonopah or something like that in between to make it a little easier? There is no place in Tonopah, Hawthorne, any place like that that we could possibly do a conference at all. I mean, really. We could do one uh, maybe out in the hinterlands, pitch some tents, you know, um, run a generator for this stuff. I don't know. But honestly, there's no place to do anything like this in between those locations. So we'll keep bouncing back and forth. This year, Reno. Next year, Las Vegas. And next year is change of command in Las Vegas. So make your plans now. I want to keep all the state communicating. And it gets tough. I know it does. I mean, I'm on, I come up on the nets Thursday night, and sometimes we hear from different parts, and sometimes we don't. All kinds of reasons for that. But I'd like to keep us talking between all areas of the state. One wing, guys, one wing. Look at the numbers, we've improved. Colonel Lee brought that up in her discussion a moment ago. We've really improved, especially since we got to phase three. Now we've had a little, gone back and forth a little bit like every other wing in the, in the country but we are 
getting better. Baby steps. We've had encampment in person in Wendover. I do want to call out Pete Gertzen about that. He did a lot of work on getting an encampment together. We now are working on a deal on an MOU. It's in progress between us and Utah Wing to share that venue going forward. So we're not going to be like, oh gosh, can we have encampment? Oh gosh, where? Again, we're challenged in this state for venues for, for things. Encampment has been one of them. But we have gotten to the place where we now have a venue, which is cool. Because now we know what we can count on for logistics, for planning purposes, and all that stuff. And we had an in-person wing conference. We're here. We are here. We're not on, on Zoom and on Teams and I'm not doing all everything and talking to you guys on the camera at my desk. We're here. A lot of wings canceled their conferences. And I will tell you the, the honest truth, until the end of September, we weren't sure what things were gonna happen in Nevada regarding COVID and everything else. We weren't sure until the end of November and we had to make a decision because of the contract here. And Colonel Hazeltine and I talked about it and talked about it and talked about it and we just said, you know, we need to do it. We need to bring us together again. We're masking, absolutely. I don't, vaccination doesn't matter. We'll do everything we can about the COVID protocols, but we need to get together as a wing. Doing this electronic stuff only goes so far. We need to have those interactions and that networking and that socialization. And so we decided, you know, we're just gonna do it. This is Nevada and we're just gonna do it. So we did, here we are. We did lose some folks in membership, but we're growing again. We're starting to pick up and grow a little bit again. We're going in the right direction, baby steps. And this last part is the most important. When, as we get back into what we know to do, training and flying and getting back in person to have those discussions that are really hard to have over the phone or over teams, to sit down and, and interact with each other and rebuild our team mentality, we're gonna strengthen. We're gonna go back to what we know CAP to be in Nevada. And we are, we're going that direction. Thank you guys for staying with it. It's been tough, I know it's been tough, believe me. <laughs> it's been a tough time to be a commander. Squadron level, wing level, region level, it's just been hard. But here we are, we persevere, here we are. And we're going forward, we're moving forward, our, our, we're improving every single day. So thank you guys for staying with us. Thanks for what you do. Thanks for toughing it out. I mean it, it's been hard on everybody. Thank you. One Nevada wing, one CAP. Nevada wing. Thank you guys for staying with it and hanging tough. We're, getting, we're going in the right direction and we're going to keep moving forward. Thanks.